Hi guys and welcome to I Do I See. Today I thought I'd just show off my little deadbolt that I bought as a ready to run uh, and thought, no, I'm not going to upgrade it. But famous last words, it's such a good little truck that I thought, how good could it be upgraded? So one thing led to another and uh, here we are. And also I'll show off uh, the body shells that I've toyed with as well and take them out at the end of the video for a bit of a spin. You can see them all on the track. The first upgrade I made was uh, buying the Year Racing SCX24 complete metal upgrade set. And that came with the brass diff cover set, the two pack, which are those right there. They had a nice little bit of weight to the uh, rig and the full metal upgrade also came with these front brass steering knuckles. They're really, really sweet. They give you a lot more turn. Very easy to install, and I probably should have done that as an upgrade first, but by buying the complete metal set, I thought maybe it'll save me a bit of money down the track, and it certainly has. Uh, the metal upgrade set also has the centre stainless steel metal diff cover and also has the front and rear axle covers for the diffs. They've also got the brass uh, weighted wheel hubs which go on the inside of the wheels. They added a nice little bit of weight all around. Um, so it's a really good little kit. And um, Probably the best reason for this kit is you get these drive shaft. They're the HD steel front and rear drive shaft. Um, and again, they're very, very easy to install. The next upgrade's a little bit hard to see, but they're the GPM hardened steel. I think they're number 45 front and rear. Steel drive shaft copper collar set. There's a bit of a mouthful, but they're basically the bits that run through your axles. And these ones are a little bit longer and they have the ball collars, um, which help extend. And so your pin can go straight through and then your weighted brass hubs can go over the top of them. It certainly helps for stability. I've also upgraded the servo and every time I upgrade for micro servos, I, I buy several and then I end up buying the Savox four kilogram one. I'm not sure of the number of it, but it's very, very good. I've got them in my head tracker. I've got them in several other little things. Not cheap, probably the more expensive of the micro servos, but they're just very, very good. You do have to do a few little modifications. Um, the front servo mount, just trim them out so they can get up inside of your chassis there. Of course, you can clear it, but once one wheel goes up, the other one, just remember when that wants to spring up, you uh, need that room there. And also, so that the steering horn doesn't sit out too much, these servos are a little bit deeper. So you need to trim just the back section of the little case that holds um, the original servo in there. These servos, as I said, are a little bit longer. So if you trim it off, it can still slide all the way and it will fit over the top of your upper link arms there, which is the dog bone thing, um, which also you should just dremel off the very bottom of that um, wishbone. That certainly helps not touch that drive shaft. But yeah, so you can see there, you can just trim off the uh, back and cut the front down, just a couple of mods for make the perfect servo fit. The battery position's also been sort of upgraded. I've dropped it down and, and the battery I've got it in is, is it a, a Gen Ace Tattoo 45C 600 milliamp battery there. Really, really small, a lot smaller than the original one that comes with it. Uh, thinner and shorter, but yes, a little bit, um, a little bit thicker. Uh, I don't know the running time. I've never actually ran it flat. They're just so good. And then I went the uh, gunmetal yeah, racing steel linkage, upper and lower linkage arm set. Um, they're not the short wheelbase. They only come as a longer wheelbase, but they're great. They've got the metal collars, so you can actually adjust and get a lot more adjustment and fine tuning out of your um, linkage arms if you want to move your axles just forward and back slightly. Um, yeah, they're very, very sweet and I've had no, no trouble and a very easy install. Most of the air racing stuff fits really, really nicely, uh, without forcing into the spots that they're meant to fit. I've got a generic upgraded metal steering set there. 
usually uh, I'll throw the grommets in there like there so as so as it doesn't wobble around there's a little bit of movement and you do need that a little bit but um, there was just so much movement with these and the original ones as well that the rubber grommets will help of course all that extra weight comes with a little bit of a few problems themselves and um, I've burnt out a couple of motors I burnt out the original dynamite which was a nice little 030 motor toyed with a few other 030 motors and uh, ended up blowing them up as well as you do so I thought let's go the big 180 motor which I know will fit um, a little bit of work involved with this though it's a Panda Hobbies 51 turn motor which is beautiful um, but the pinion is further out on the shaft and there's a sort of shaft between the motor and the pinion so you do need to stick it out there is a good reason why the shaft is sticking out uh, and the pinion sitting right at the end and you can see it visible is you, you can't physically fit a 180 motor right in against the housing uh, the center diff housing there's not enough room and it pushes the um, motor out and of course the pinion doesn't mesh with the other gear your spur gear um, yes sort of pushes your weight a little bit further back with the motor but uh, there's certainly a lot of weight up front that I've made in this that, that it was a benefit that the um, motor does sit back a little bit further. I found myself a nice little 200 mil by 100 mil uh, metal square tube um, and that's what's in there you sort of cut the half cut it in half uh, drill the holes out though so they all line up um, and it sits really nicely a lot of torque in these little motors not quick but gee the torque is just nice and powerful then came the bling the gpm red aluminium gearbox it's called a gearbox with cover but but i just like to think of them as axles they come with the red axle uh, a diff cover uh, but i've kept my brass ones because they're a little bit heavier i'm uh, not sure how much i did weigh them when i first put them on I knew it was going to be an improvement to have uh, a little bit of weight on the axles like I have but I really didn't realize how much of an improvement it did make um, it, it certainly allowed the suspension to uh, sort of drop down nicely the extra weight as it sort of springs up the other wheel will drop down um, and so the extra weight in the right spots really has made a good difference and the final upgrade only because they took a little bit while to come in but they're a 42 mil uh, hot racing aluminium air shock which are for the micro loces being 42 mil they're longer than the other ones i think the other ones are about 31 so they do have a lot more travel but you do have to make your own uh, mounts i've made little carbon fiber mounts here which uh, just sort of screw into the chassis in the chassis holes uh, that were there and a lot of people thought they stuck and, and i read some reviews they were sticking for me a little bit but only when i noticed that they weren't uh vertical if they were a little bit off they were sort of sticking which which is kind of obvious so when i mounted them i had to sort of with the front uh, body mount there i've had to remove a little bit of the side with the dremel just so i can sit side against the chassis and flat against the chassis and the screws for these shocks also are a little bit bigger uh, than the screws that go into the axles themselves all i did was drill out the axle holes a little bit more and re-threaded it for the right threads and they fit in really nicely but there's just so much travel in it it's, it's really really nice i, I really am impressed with these shocks i've toyed with a lot of wheels um, <laughs> and geez i just keep coming back to these ax axial naito ones or, or nito the original ones that came with them only because they've they're better <laughs> than the other ones that I, I keep putting on I'll, I'll put them on and there'll be parts of my track that i can't get up with new wheels so i go back to these and and lo and behold they they crawl up it nicely i do have some rock locks uh coming the rc4 wheel drive brand ones which everyone raves about and i've got some steel line beadlock uh, steel wheels with them as well coming so uh, i'll do a good comparison video with both of those uh, and we'll see how they compare i also went ahead and got uh, a metal front bumper a air racing one uh, it's sweet it's got the little uh little hook things there that 
leave and dangle. Um, yeah, no, it's just sweet and adds that little bit of weight at the front where I need it. I've also had my fun with body shells, as you do. Um, I haven't seen many people sort of toy with different body shells on there. The deadbolt is perfectly nice body shell and perfect weighted. Uh, I found this 118th um, Duratrax Mini Quake body shell. I uh, found it cheap in a local store and put it on, painted it. Um, as you can see, the 118th is a little bit big for those. Uh, that wheel base, but it didn't look too bad when it was driving. Um, I had some fun. We'll have a look at the video and you can tell me what you think. But no, nah, I got rid of it. So I went and got myself a Wrangler, a nice Jeep to match my Red Cat one and thought I'll paint it a nice light grey. Uh, whoops. Didn't quite come out grey. I think uh, that to me a coarser PS spray paint it comes out not so much grey but a light sky blue. So I ended up just buying another one and doing doing what I originally wanted to do to the new one. Both with um nice uh, black roofs and black hubs. Then of course I built a trailer for my Red Cat and thought wouldn't it be good to have this little one as a quad bike? Maybe I could make that drive up on the back of the trailer. Uh, so I had a little search and, and I will confess someone else did come up with this idea before me. Um, so I found the sort of same body shell. It's a Suzuki Vinson, V-I-N-S-O-N. -S I think it's a new Ray brand. Um, 112th, it's just a toy, die cast toy with a plastic top, but you just unscrew the top. Uh, I went overboard with the trimming. I had this battery sitting sideways. The short, the original, the, the shorter wheelbase uh, linkage arms that come with the dead bolts. This fits really nicely on, but um, just going up hills, it just didn't have that stability. And I, I had quite a few rollovers, um, particularly going downhill as well. Actually, it would the uh, back would flip over. So obviously, the longer wheelbase is a lot better for your crawling. Um, and went back to that, and I could only get the GPM uh, linkage arms in the long. So hence why I've been running the longs. But that's pretty cool. I do like it. So that's about the upgrades. Was it worth it? Uh, well, of course it was. I have to say that. Um, they are really good to start with. I, I won't deny it. But just a little bit of weight in the right spots is, um, certainly improves. Uh, I have gone overboard. I've probably spent twice as much as the car is ready to run. Uh, probably about $600 odd dollars Australian of... of uh, put into it that's including the car but she certainly is a beast and I've had a lot of fun so let's get it on the track see how she goes see how the other body shells look for you um, and don't forget to hit that subscribe there's a lot more coming